How many times have you seen this? Your friend gets a new bike, maybe it's a gravel bike, a road bike, maybe it's a new full suspension bike, or even an e-bike. The bike doesn't matter. But your buddy's fired up, he goes on his first ride, and he posts a photo that looks something like this. If you're cringing just at the sight of that photo, bravo. And if you're not, please grab a paper and pen because you're gonna need to take some notes. Here are three simple rules for taking proper bike photos. Rule number one, drive side out. Now why the drive side? Because you can see the crank set, the cassette, the derailleurs, and frankly, it's the more attractive side of the bike. And for reference, here's the non-drive side of the bike. Nah, boring, right? The only exception would be if you felt the need to showcase both sides. Like if you had a custom painted frame with a split design like this Tarmac SL7. We want to see both sides in that case. It's also worth noting that when adjusting your crank arm angle, make sure that you're in the highest gear or smallest cog in the rear cassette. So if you're on SRAM, that's likely the 10 tooth. And if you're on Shimano, that would be the 11 tooth. Rule number two, the crank arm continues the chain stay line. Now, some may say that it should be parallel with the ground. I disagree with that theory. The chain stay is a clean line that should be continued. See the difference here? It's subtle, but it matters. Okay, you've gotten this far. Your photos are officially good. Now let's make them great. Rule number three, the valve stem should be at six o'clock or 12 o'clock. And I can already see the people in the comments, but Chris, it should always be at six o'clock. Rule number 26. Yeah, this is true most of the time, but what if you have a set of wheels like the Zip 303S's where the logo, if you put it at six o'clock, is gonna be upside down. That's where you'd put it at 12 o'clock as seen here. So let's recap. Number one, drive side out. Number two, crank arm continuing the line of the chainstay set in the highest gear. And number three, valve stems at six o'clock or in some rare cases, 12 o'clock. It's all about the details. If you want bonus points, take your photos in proper lighting. Now you can quickly Google when the golden or blue hour is in your area to determine when the best lighting will be. It also helps if you have a stand or something that allows you to keep your bike upright, but pull it away from the wall. This adds that little bit of extra dimension and depth to your photos. And if you want mega bonus points, grab a proper camera, pair it with a lens that weighs more than your entire frame and fire away. I really think that the details in these types of photos don't go unnoticed and they look much better than your typical phone photos. I'm also gonna go out on a limb here and say that you don't need to wash your bike for each photo. Don't be afraid to show that you actually ride it and that it actually collects dust, mud, and everything in between. And if you find yourself on the fence with any of the photos that you've taken, you can tag me and I'll give you some honest feedback. If taking better bike photos isn't on your list of goals for 2024, maybe it's time to add it, myself included. As we approach the end of the year, I'm gonna wrap up my review and thoughts on the Blackheart Road Tie. It's a titanium road bike that I've been riding for the last few hundred miles to determine if it's a viable alternative to a carbon fiber road bike. It definitely looks the part. And then I'll probably close out the year with my top three or five most memorable rides of the year. See, everybody's been doing like these top 10 equipment videos and stuff like that. I really wanna talk about my favorite rides of the year because at the end of the day, that's what's most important, right? Anyways, until next time.